what I've presented to you there is the number of alcohol-related incidents that occurred in the financial year 1st of April 2012 to the 31st of March 2012, comparing them to the financial year 1st of April 2013 to the 31st of March 2014. So a year-on-year comparison, which is the same sort of information that was presented to you back in October, but in a, in a slightly different format to take account the variances that have occurred as a result of the reordering of the boundaries. Um, I apologize that it's presented slightly differently, but I hope that that makes sense that it's presented in that way and, and that the information is comparable. So the, the top line is the number of alcohol-related incidents that have been reported in that blue area year on year, and you'll first of all see that there has been a reduction in the number of alcohol-related incidents that have occurred uh, in, the, in percentage terms. Uh, there is no change in the percentage terms. Uh, the Birkenhead Head Parliamentary Constituency Area still has 47% of all the alcohol-related incidents across the area, almost half the incidents that occur in the group occur within this blue area. The next figure relates to the arrests. How many alcohol-related, how many arrests have there been for alcohol-related incidents? Again, there's been a reduction, uh, but still almost half the alcohol-related arrests occur in this particular area. The next one looks at incidents where you've got a combination of violence and alcohol. Pleasingly, we've seen a reduction uh, and a reduction across the board. But far more incidents are occurring in the blue area than are occurring in the other three areas. Interestingly, although incidents have reduced, the number of arrests that have occurred for alcohol and violence combined has actually increased. The next figure relates to nuisance and alcohol, and nuisance relates to antisocial behaviour. Nuisance is a, is a home office category, um, and antisocial behaviour sits within that nuisance category. Um, again, we've seen a reduction in actual incidents, although the percentage that's being suffered by this area has actually increased in comparison to the number of incidents. The number of arrests that have occurred for a combination of nuisance and alcohol has reduced, but again, the percentage has increased. 60% of the arrests for nuisance and alcohol occurred in this blue area. And finally, the bottom figure related to street drinking, uh, an issue that many of us have discussed in the licensing committees, an awful lot of work goes on in relation to. We've had a number of operations going on in that area. We've had controlled drinking environments introduced. Uh, Operation Develops a recent operation, multi-agency operation that took place earlier this year. And we've had a reduction in the number of incidents uh, of street drinking. <coughs> but still 84% of complaints about street drinking come within that blue area and the only rule proposal to have a designated public place for it introduced. So if we move on to the, the third page in comparison to the, the fourth page. There are two boxes on the third page, I'll say, the last six months. Um, it looks, first of all, at the number of alcohol related crimes, the number of alcohol related arrests. It talks about the Seven Beats area, um, and uh, I, think I mentioned this in the, in the earlier committee meeting, but the Seven Beats area is an extension of the Stronger Communities Initiative. Uh, and what we're showing here is that um, although we have issues right the way across that blue area on the, on the previous map, an increased percentage of those problems occur within seven beats, seven police beats in the centre of Birkenhead. And this is just to show a comparison of what's actually occurring in the, in the centre of Birkenhead. So we see that uh, in, in, the, in the whole of the blue area, there are 354 alcohol related crimes in the last six months in the centre of 137 crimes. With alcohol related arrests, the whole of the blue area in the last six months, 182. Nine percent of crime that occurs in Birkenhead is alcohol related. Eighteen percent of arrests that occur in Birkenhead are alcohol related. Twenty-four percent of violence is alcohol related. And five percent of all incidents that occur in that blue area in the last six months are alcohol related. The final box: thirty-nine um, percent of alcohol related crime occurs in the, the Seven Beats area. Well, that means that sixty-one percent of crime occurs in the other. 27% of alcohol-related arrests arrest do occur in, those, in, that, in that area of the centre. 73% of alcohol-related arrests occur in the rest of the blue area. 46% of alcohol-related 
relate into this, uh, and that we're in the 70s area. So 54% still lies outside of that. And drug result there is 39% of the arrest that had occurred in the centre. But there was still 61% of the arrest that occurred outside of that area. So while there is a disproportionate amount of alcohol related crime and incidents that occurs really in the centre of Birkenhead, it is a constituency wide issue. That I think a designated public places or that is necessary to address that issue I have been turned to positive responses in relation to that. Uh, there was an article in the um, Royal Globe in September, which uh, was just before the committee meeting, and Councillor Davis, which kind of George Davis, apologies, uh, wrote in relation to that. And um, would it be appropriate for me to quote it in relation to that? Is that okay, Chair? So, Councillor George Davis, Deputy, Deputy Council Leader and Council Member for Housing and Community Safety said, uh, We have a major problem with that and we need to eradicate it. If the police brought evidence of street drinking problems in other where are there is, then we would consider, consider a similar action there. As someone who lives in Bay my concern is that if we introduce a designated public place of order in some of the worst affected areas, then the problem would be pushed down the line to other areas. Blanket cover across the whole constituency would stop this from happening. These better understanding of what they can do with a small minority of people who abuse the system. Since um, this meeting the, on the committee was announced, I've received uh, two emails uh, one from Councillor Jim Stapleton, um, uh, one from Councillor Jean Stapleton, uh, and that was from a, um, a, 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 a member. Said that the problems are continuing in that area uh, and in fact getting worse. I also coincidentally received uh, an email from the neighbourhood officer from uh, Benham Sandwell Lane Police Station, now Benham Head Police Station, who um, was instrumental in putting the evidence together for the police meeting constable Wilkinson. said that well, what's happened with the designated public places order because things are really starting to turn ugly again down here. And I was obviously able to tell her that I was going So I mentioned in the earlier committee that what I might say in, in this committee meeting may appear to be contradictory uh, to what I said earlier. Uh, and I am not saying there is, there is not an issue in the centre of Birkenhead. There is an issue in the centre of Birkenhead. There are a number of tools that we need to utilise to eradicate that problem in the words of um, Councillor George Davis. And this is an important tool. I do not want to be an operational police officer in a problem area that can only use my power on this side of the road, but there is a problem on the other side of the road that I can't feel. That doesn't seem to make sense to me. If this power is extended in other areas, then it will be an important tool, along with many others, uh, to try and deal with the issues caused by nuisance and antisocial behaviour. And I respectfully request that you consider to agree to the introduction of a designated public place in order for a whole parliamentary constituency of the Okay. Any questions? No, it was just an observation, Chair, for me. Um, I was travelled down Western Lake on Sunday at around right one o'clock, and uh, there was four people sitting on the bench, moving out the line, and three loads of in the air. I mean, I had a few steps I know to keep them up there, going down the day. But that area is well known on spot for it. Someone said, is there a 
I don't think the current area of it had is fit for purpose. Um, so whilst we're looking to have um, an area, a larger area for fit, then I don't think, based on the evidence that's available to us at the moment, that it's necessary to seek an increase in the size of the areas uh, within the other locations. However, if that information were to present itself, we would go through the same exercise. Yes, I just wanted to clarify things for members. Um, there's been reference to a convenient time to step in on this point. There has been reference, obviously, by um, Sergeant Barrigan to alcohol free zones, which was the initial uh, approach to try and deal with these issues. Um, and now they're um, deemed to be designated put in place as order. Um, but the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act of 2014 renames them again. Uh, and um, that piece of legislation actually is looking to replace designated public places orders with uh, what they call um, public spaces protection orders. Um, the impact um, of the same um, is not going to affect any decision that you may reach this evening. Um, it actually gives, um, if a uh, public spaces protection order is being sought at some point in the future, it's not just to do that or related, it's to do with general anti-social behaviour orders. Um, the piece of legislation that refers to uh, public space protection orders in respect of alcohol, unfortunately there isn't a starting date for that. But the, the, the current legislation which renames uh, this type of order does say that uh, unlike the current position uh, whereby a uh, designated public places order is effectively an open order, um, what the new legislation says uh, is that from the date that uh, the traditional provisions kick in uh, and can only apply for um, a public space protection order, they are to be reviewed every three years, or you can only seek to impose one for a maximum of three years, upon which then you have to reconsider the position, go out to further consultation, and then 
um, indicate where they were to extend that uh, for uh, an extra three year period. So I thought, because of what's been said by Sergeant Barrick, and I was going to mention it anyway, but that was an appropriate time to, to clarify that um, in the future, uh, these orders will be referred to as public space protection orders. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, um, it's just really a comment and then a few other questions as well. Just, um, the the uh, EPPO will are probably doing in various ways to do that. Um, and given the figures that the Sergeant presented to us about their hesitation in supporting uh, the EPPO to have a very high position. However, the question I've got for the Sergeant is in relation to the cost of the sign. And I haven't quite heard anything yet about where the money's coming from. Um, I have spoken with our chief inspector who's making the approach to the community safety team uh, for some of the costs. That hasn't been fully pursued yet because we didn't want to bring the decisions that the committee was going to make. Uh, the discussions have also taken place um, with the um, constituency stroke of the neighborhood manager. But yes, depending on the decision made by the committee, then that will be further pursued. Um, uh, there are a number of avenues that can be explored in relation to that. I think the uh, establishing of some of the existing signage can remain in place. It's going to make a big difference to the costs in relation to that. And then it depends on how far we how far we go with it. Although this will be introduced uh, for the whole of it, and we've got problems across that whole bit. The issues are also in some cases than others. So what we would seek to do with the staff at um, both the police station is, is to target the more significant areas first uh, and then we identify the broader areas that need to be covered that we would seek additional options. So I think we're, we're going to put our clock um, according to our needs and questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 